This is Zachary Horn with Clean Code Studio, Clean Code, Clean Life, Simplify. And today we are going over Vue's Virtual DOM and specifically what a virtual DOM is, why the heck we use it, what are its benefits, and how do we mount that virtual DOM to our actual HTML DOM. All right, so Vue's Virtual DOM. To understand the virtual DOM, at first we need to understand the traditional HTML DOM. Now, if you don't understand it, you have definitely interacted with the uh, HTML DOM before. So what is the HTML DOM? It is just the tree of nodes, aka objects, that make up your traditional HTML um, document. It's a it, DOM stands for Document Object Module, or Document Object Model. So it starts with the document. The document has a head and has a body. A body can have a div and then an h1 and then a p tag and then etc cetera, etc. Cetera. The head has a title and then the meta tags, all the way down to the actual text node within a given HTML element. Now, why do we use a document object model? Well, one, the DOM represents a document as nodes and objects, so that makes it very easy to interact with. Um, we also use the document object model because it allows devs, it allows us, us as engineers to build documents, to navigate the document tree, to add, modify, and delete DOM elements and content. So that brings us back to what is Vue's virtual DOM? We already have a normal HTML DOM, so why does Vue create its own virtual DOM? Well, Vue's virtual DOM is actually made of Vue components. And as we discussed earlier, what is a Vue component? Well, Vue component is just a JS object that extends the Vue instance. But why does Vue use a virtual DOM? Why doesn't Vue just hook into the traditional HTML DOM? Well, Vue uses a virtual DOM of Vue components that go parent component, children components, children components of the children components. It uses that layout because, one, it is faster to use a virtual DOM. When we use a virtual DOM, we don't have to go and re-render the entire HTML DOM when we really only want to re-render these specific elements or these specific nodes from the DOM. So we create a virtual DOM and mount it to the regular DOM as a way to make the speed of our application more efficient. It's smaller, faster, and it's faster when re-rendering um, the entire, it is faster than re-rendering the entire HTML DOM. Another reason we use a virtual DOM instead of the traditional HTML DOM is because we can implement extended behavior, meaning Vue's virtual DOM elements they're actually view components, and by default, a view component just extends from the view instance. The view instance, as we can see down here, is just import view from view, new view. That's the view instance. The instance just means an object. We're instantiating a specific instance of the view class. So, the third question is how do we actually mount our virtual DOM, view's virtual DOM, to a specific HTML element, or more generally, how do we mount our virtual DOM to the traditional HTML DOM? Um, and the, that's also really simple. So we import Vue from Vue, and then we say, hey, new Vue, and then this object right here, the only uh, parameter that a Vue instance accepts is an object of configuration settings. Now, these, this object, this configuration settings object, this is how we interact with the Vue API. These are all settings saying, hey, let's configure Vue, the Vue instance, to do these things. And whenever we configure this object, that's actually, according to Vue terminology, how we interact with the Vue API. When you see the Vue API docs, all it's saying is, okay, here's what you can set as the settings in that object we pass into the new Vue instance. And so to actually mount the virtual DOM to an HTML element, we just say one of those settings within that configuration object is EL, standing for element. And we pick a element ID and we say, okay, element uh, with an ID of app. We want to mount our new view instance with an element of ID map. Or we want to mount our new view instance to the HTML element with an ID of app. And then the rest of these, they're just more options we can configure. But this is the important one. We can actually prove that once we mount our Vue instance, new Vue, let's mount that new Vue instance, that new Vue virtual DOM to the element with an ID of app. Well, let's do this. Let's go to our browser. Let's do document.query selector app. 
mounted our DOM, our virtual DOM, to the element with an ID of app, we just got our element with an ID of app, it will actually have this new view property, underscore, underscore, view, underscore, underscore. And if we actually mess with that within our console, within our Chrome, Firefox, whatever console, and we just do document.query selector, get the element we mounted view to, it will have a view property. That view property will return us the view instance we mounted. Now, the view virtual DOM is actually just a view instance. A view instance can have children. That Those children are what make up the view virtual DOM tree. So as soon as we make a new view instance, we actually made a new virtual DOM once we mount it to the element with an ID of app. What makes the tree effect on that virtual DOM is adding children, like components app. This, chil this child, view component, that's the app component. And that's what makes up that tree effect. Now, if app has three children, you're going to have your root instance, which is this one right here. And then your child is going to be app. And then app has three children. Well, it's going to look like, you know, one parent, one child. That child has three children. And so the root instance, the root of our virtual DOM, has three grandchildren. And it's as simple as that, guys. Um, so what happens when I create a new view instance? What happens? Exactly what happens when I create a new view instance? Well, the view instance accepts an object of view API settings, as we went over already. The view instance constructor accepts an object of view API configuration options as the only parameter. Obviously, that object has several properties you can pass through. View instance equals new view instance of view API settings. That's one. That's how we just set it up. Two, the virtual DOM is mounted to the HTML DOM. New view L whatever ID, the ID of the element we want to mount our new virtual DOM to. Just like we went over over here, we mounted to our element with an ID of app. So, virtual DOM is mounted to an HTML DOM element based on the property L and the value we give that property in Vue's API configuration settings object we use to instantiate the Vue instance. Three, determining the virtual DOM's root. So root is actually a option or a property on the view instance object. The root is going to be the only view instance within the virtual DOM tree of view that has no parent instance. If a view instance is mounted to the DOM and has no parent view instance, then it is the root node. Um, you can also just tell because it's going to be new view mount here has all the children. It's usually in like main.js, app.js, wherever you instantiate your uh, original view application and all the children will usually have their own component view files um, but it's gonna be um, by definition the view instance with no parents every other view instance in the virtual DOM tree will have a parent um, so that's how you determine the root node of your virtual DOM then determining the children of the root node well the root instance of our virtual DOM may have children in its tree the children are defined by children components registered in the view API settings object all that means is new view, that's our root instance, this object right here, this view instance is our, is our root instance. The children nodes, the children elements are defined within components. Components app, the only child is app. And that's just a fancy way of saying that the only child on that is app. So if we were to do new view components child one child two, it would have two children nodes. And that's how we determine the children of our root node and a uh, in a view application. So obviously you can tree out as far down as you want to go um, and you can have multiple layers in that tree and it can go parent, child, child of child, child of child of child, the fourth child down can have four components, ten components, otherwise known as four nodes or ten nodes. But in a nutshell guys, that is Vue's virtual DOM. That is how we understand it. That's how you mount it to the HTML DOM and how we begin to interact with the virtual DOM, with the Vue's virtual DOM on our web page.